spring is finally in the air here in New York. So today I'm gonna to share with you guys how to make a greenhouse, but we're going to turn it into a tea house. If you guys know me, you guys know I love tea. So I thought I'd put a spin on the good old fashioned greenhouse. I also love vintage, so I thought I'd mix them all together. We're using some vintage windows and we're gonna turn it into a little tea garden so we can make our own tea. I'm so excited for this project and for all the tea I'm gonna consume after this. So let's go get started. If you guys missed Tuesday's video, definitely go watch it. That was part one to this video. So in that video, we went shopping for all the supplies. We went to some antique shops and I found these old windows for $9 each. So right now I'm just taking these brackets off of them because we won't be needing them. You could probably repurpose these um, for either new windows or um, even for this project. I'm sure there's something you could use it for, but I don't need it for this. So after um, I took those brackets off, I did actually hose down the windows just to get any of the loose paint off. And now I'm just taking this outdoor paint and I'm just painting the inside of the windows. So I do wanna mention when you're working with old windows, you definitely wanna get them tested for lead just to make sure you are safe. Um, and so after you know that you're safe, you can either leave the windows as is or paint them. I still felt like I just wanted the extra safety measure of having the inside of the window painted. That way the inside of the greenhouse doesn't have any paint chipping into um, our lovely tea. So that's why I decided to just paint that. And I'm painting it a little bit messy because I'm just gonna go in with a razor later on and clean it all up. For this project, I wanted to try to use as much material that I already had. I didn't want to have to go to the store and buy new material because I feel like with every project we do, there's always a little bit of waste and I just want to try to use up the things that we do have. That way we're not being wasteful. We do save all of the wood so our basement is full of wood. It looks like a little lumber yard. Um, so that's what I used a lot for this project. Um, I had this piece of plywood that was um, pretty perfect for the sizing I needed. So when it comes to the base for your tea house, you could either do like I'm doing and get a thick piece of plywood or wood and then attach legs to it, which you guys will see later on. Or you could go and buy um, a used, um, like a side table or a dresser, something like that, that way um, the tea house can sit on it and I did try to look for one, but I couldn't find one So I was just showing you guys how beautiful it was today and We heard some noise from coming from our shed and it turned out that there was all these little baby squirrels and a mama squirrel in there and so we got them out all safely and um, That was the mama squirrel. She was taking the baby back up. It looks like they had a nest maybe up at the top um, so it was just the cutest thing to see these little baby squirrels. If you guys remember when I did the Enchanted Cottage makeover, we found a little family of baby bunnies. So I just feel like every spring now we're gonna find a new family of animals. Um, but anyway, getting back to the project, um, I ended up buying these legs from Amazon and Amazon had some beautiful legs. They had some that looked very Victorian um, with like flowers engraved on it. And I really wanted to go with those ones, but they were just a little bit too short um, but I will link those ones just in case you guys want to go with those they were so so pretty um, and the legs on Amazon also were a lot cheaper I think that these maybe were like 36 for the four of them 
where at Lowe's they were $16 each, so it would have just been so expensive. So what I did is I just marked out where I wanted each of the legs, and then I just put a little circle in the center. That way I know where to drill for the screws. And voila, we have our base. So you guys can see that was so easy and simple to make. So now for the next part, again, this project is actually very, very simple. Um, and I feel like it looks like it's not, but it really is. Um, so now I just took the windows and I was figuring out how I wanted to arrange them. And I also wanted to clarify, because I don't know if I, if I made sense before, but I didn't paint the outside of the windows because I wanted that like rustic look. Um, but I, I just painted the inside. So this part was really hard to do because I definitely could have used Connor's help, but he was working this day. So the way that I um, set these brackets onto the base was I just bought a bunch of little brackets from Amazon and I will link those for you guys. And I just screwed the brackets down to the base and then screwed them into the window. And that held to hold everything up. But it was so tricky trying to hold the window and hold the bracket by myself. But once I got the first bracket in, it was a lot easier. So also from Amazon, I found these hinges, which I thought were so beautiful. And just kind of like, they remind me of like a little fairy or something. So I thought these would be so cute to put on the tea house so I went with those again I will link those um, for you guys had I had the help of Connor I probably would have put the door part on last but because I didn't have his help, I needed to put that on um, second. So now I'm just adding in the rest of the brackets and the rest of the windows. Um, as you guys can see, this project really is just so simple and easy to do. So I connected this back window with just some really, really long screws. Um, that way everything is held together and secure. So now that everything's together, I'm just gonna add a couple more of these brackets to the bottom right here. So I bought this, which I was gonna use as the handle, but then I realized that the windows already kind of have a built-in handle, so I kind of scrapped that, but those really were so beautiful. Um, I might still add it on just for fun. Um, but now what I'm doing is to build the roof, I'm just cutting out some spots um, on the window. That way the um, framing of the window can kind of just like sit right in and it's nice and secure. Um, I think the roof is probably what I could have used a little help on. I've never built anything with a roof before, but I was just trying to wing it. Um, I'll show you guys what I think I could have probably done a little bit better on. But I think overall it ended up working out. So kind of what I did was I just took two pieces of wood and then we connected them. I think we're talking to our mailman here. <laughs> um, but as you guys can see, we connected them like that. So basically I just screwed them down. For the roof, I just got this big sheet of metal. Um, they also had this in like plastic and stuff, but I figured I would just go um, with the metal one. The other ones that they had were white, so I thought this would be a good contrast with color. You could also use old sheets. Sorry, there's a plane going by. It might be really loud, but <laughs> you could also use old sheets of metal too, which would look really beautiful. So we're just gonna start by measuring out how much of the roof, it's so sunny, how much of the roof um, we need to cut. And I think I'm gonna need also to make this a little bit longer because I think it's, I don't think it's wide enough. So I'll probably need to widen it.
you're probably gonna wanna wear gloves while doing this because it could definitely cut you. Um, so I think what I'm gonna do first is cut it the full length that I need it to be. Um, and then see if it's possible to bend it. I don't think it's going to be, but figured we try and just see if that works out. Maybe I'll cut it like an inch bigger just to give me some extra room. So now that you guys saw my plan for the roof, I'm gonna show you how it worked out and what I think I could have done a little bit better. So here is what the framing of the roof looks like. And also I did end up using metal roofing screws that way nothing would rust through. I do think I could have made the roof, um, the line of it like a little bit wider probably. Um, but it ended up being fine on mine, but on yours you might just wanna make the framing a little bit wider. So since I use this corrugated metal roofing, it is so beautiful, but as I did mention before, it wasn't gonna be wide enough. Um, so I didn't show it in the clips, but I did end up cutting some extra pieces. That way, as you, as you can see right here, if I were to just leave it like this, it doesn't fully cover um, the entire roof. So I did add some extra pieces to the sides. That way, everything is completely covered. Also with the corrugated metal roofing, you will need a piece of flashing for the middle part um, at the top, that way no water gets in. So I think if you were just to use a flat um, sheet of metal, it would probably be a little bit more simple than this was, but overall, I think it came out pretty good for it being my first little roof I've ever done. Um, but now we're gonna work on the legs. So I'm just using the same exterior paint that I used um, on the windows and I'm just adding the paint to a little bit of water and then it's creating a beautiful whitewash So I'm just going over the legs with that. I didn't want the legs to look too new in comparison to the old windows I wanted this to just feel like very roughly put together and like it's been sitting there for years and I'm just in a fairy garden <laughs> so That is the vibe I was going for and I think that it worked out really well with doing this whitewash kind of look on the legs. And I also painted the base, um, that piece of plywood as well. There was a lot of dust inside from screwing down all of those brackets. So we have this little vacuum we recently got and it is Connor's favorite thing ever. It's actually really cool because it uses the power tool batteries. So it's just like super easy to move around. Um, so I just grabbed the little vacuum and cleaned up inside. And then I just continued painting the inside and I really like how this whitewash turned out. When the paint was drying, I decided to work on the shelving. So if you guys remember when I did the office makeover, I turned it into a craft room. I had um, these boards that I used for the shelving and I had this one piece left over. So I decided to cut it down and use this for the shelves in the tea house. And it actually worked out perfectly. So here we have these two like stakes that would go into the ground um, and I think you use them for plants. Um, my mom thought maybe I could flip them upside down and turn them into the way that the shelves stay up. So I thought that was a great idea. So we're trying to make it work. Um, I'm gonna have to cut off these top pieces here and I'm just gonna trace underneath where the line is. That way I can cut out a space for the bar. So first we're gonna see if we can cut 
these off. Um, probably cut it to like give it that much extra space. Oh man, this is harder than I thought. Okay, I got it off this piece. So basically what I did was I just kept twisting it like this. And then I took my foot and tried bending it off this way. Deal. So this works out so perfectly. It fits in on each side like that and voila, we have the shelves. Connor came home with a present. <laughs> so creepy. His head spins all the way around. Ew. It looks like the one from Toy Story. Cool toy. Thanks. I think I showed you guys this in the video before this one where I went shopping for this project. I found this at Target and I thought this would be so adorable to put on the top of the roof. Um, I just need to cut the base off that way we can fit it in. So Connor's gonna cut that quick for me. I showed this bell in the last video. So I just found this pink spray paint I had left over from the camper. If you guys remember what makeover that's from, let me know. Um, and then once that dried, I took some of this white spray paint and I sprayed it over top. I'll show you guys what I'm gonna do with that in a minute. But while that's drying, let's get these shelves installed. So the shelving worked out so perfectly. I'm really happy with how it turned out and really glad that I was able to use things that I already had. So there we go. The shelves look beautiful. And now here I have all of our planting stuff. Um, I'm definitely going to add a lot more um, plants in here. Um, the store that I went to only had lavender and peppermint. So let me know what other type of tea leaves I should add in. I was thinking definitely lemon balm. I'm very excited to add that in. Um, I also really want to try to grow elderberry. So let me know if you guys have tried to grow that and how it works out. Um, but yeah, if you have any other tea plant recommendations, let me know. To label my plants, I decided to take my embossed label maker, which was only like $9. It was so cheap and I feel like I use this on everything. Um, I'll link it for you guys. Um, I decided to label my plants this way and then to just add them onto the planters. And I feel like it made it just look really beautiful and I love how it turned out.
Now it's time to add in all of our plants, which was so fun because this really helped to bring the greenhouse to life. Now it's time to work on the bell. So I just took some sandpaper and I just roughed it up a little bit. Again, I just felt like it looked too new to put on the house. So I love that you could see some of the pink coming through and a little bit of the black. I felt like it helped to just give it a little bit of extra color and depth. The last project we're working on is a pathway to the tea house. I found these old pavers which I thought would be really fun to paint white and then I invited my nieces over and they came and painted them however they wanted. I did use the exterior paint for this that way it would hopefully last in the rain. Oh. Hi Annabelle! It's like drawing already. Yeah. How is it? How is it like drawing so fast? Because it's stone, so it kind of absorbs into it really quickly. I need to I need, oh yeah. That doesn't look like a flower. In the bell. It is. Right? It is a flower. It doesn't look like a flower. Why not? Because it just looks like a flower. I think it looks like a flower. Why not? Why do you want That's paint a flower. <laughs> look. You don't want me to? <laughs> you don't like it? So now you think it's going to look like a flower? I think Charlie painted all over her flower. Yeah. I want you to do orange. Can you do orange? Can you paint that? Sure. What was that sound? That's the kid. Maybe it's with wits. My nieces crack me up. They are just too funny and they are in that stage now of just being super honest about everything. So now it's officially time to see what the tea house looks like. I am so happy with how it turned out. I love all of the plants inside and it's also great too. We have so many deer in our yard and deer are my favorite animals so when i see them eating our plants i just let them go ahead and eat them so it's great that these ones are locked away that way they can't get into them
Since my plants aren't quite ready yet for their big tea debut, I am going to grab some of my favorite tea. I have quite the tea collection. I've just always loved tea, so for birthdays and holidays, I always receive tea from my friends and family, which I absolutely love. But my most favorite tea is from the Charleston Tea Plantation. It's called Plantich Plantation Peach Tea. It's hard to say, apparently. Um, this tea is so good and the smell of it, oh my goodness, it is just heaven. It is so good. I've already gone through one tin and I'm on my second now. Um, so I definitely need to make a trip down to Charleston soon to get another round of it. Um, so I thought I would share with you guys me making some tea in the tea house because it's just so perfect and beautiful. I love this little guy. I got it, um, I think from Amazon a few years back. I'll see if they still have it. It is just the cutest for tea and it makes me so happy to look at. It was such a beautiful day. I sat outside with my cup of tea and went through my herb book. This chapter was all about drying the tea leaves, which I am so excited about. I cannot wait to do that. If you guys want me to do a little video on that in the future when it's all ready, I can definitely do it for you. But I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you guys do recreate this, be sure to send me your photos. I hope you have a great day and I'll talk to you next time. Bye.